In this video, I'll be going more in depth about sigma algebras. So last time what we said is that uh, given sigma a subset of the power set of x, a measure is a function mu from sigma into r star uh, such that we had a couple properties. Uh, first one was that mu of the empty set is zero. Uh, the second property is that if a subset be mu of a less than mu of b, sorry, less than equal to uh, three, um, if a i an element of sigma i equals one to on and on uh mu of the union of the ais is going to be the sum the sum of the measures of each individual set okay but there's a couple problems with this how do we know that the empty set is in there and how do we know that it's closed under countable unions this is an intrinsic of all sigma. I can do an example, say, um, take x to be the two set, the set of two elements, and take sigma to be the set of the set of A, okay? And then the set of B. Perfectly fine set of subsets. Right? But it's not close under unions. It doesn't have the empty set in it. And it doesn't have uh, any subsets. So that's not a very useful set. And so instead of saying just any sigma, a subset of a power set, we need to have a special property that this is a sigma algebra. What's a sigma algebra? Well, give a definition. Sigma algebra. Sigma algebra. <clears throat> so, what a sigma algebra is, um, if sigma subset the power set of x, a uh, sigma is a sigma algebra, if first condition. So, our first condition we're going to need to have is that it's closed under, is that it has x is an element of sigma, okay? That's going to be important. Okay, two. Um, it's closed under complements. So if a an element of sigma, um, the complement x minus a is an element of sigma, okay? So x removing all the sets in a. So what we have so far is that x is in sigma algebra, okay? Is that if I have a an element of the sigma algebra, then all that space outside of a, but still inside of x, x minus a is an element of sigma algebra, okay? All that space outside, taking the whole, punching out a, okay? Okay, so now third property is, of course, closed under uh, countable unions. Uh, if AI is an element of sigma, the union AI is an element of sigma. Okay, this is just assuming it's countable. Okay, I'm lazy. Okay, so let's uh, find out a couple properties of this theorem. Does it have... Is the empty set an element of sigma? Yes. And is it true that this is closed under arbitrary intersections as well? And that's also true. Uh, not arbitrary, countable. Okay. Uh, proof. Um, the first one. It's pretty easy. X is an element of the sigma algebra. 
by one, that's a requirement, and then by two, uh, two one. Okay, by two, by two right here, the complement x minus x, which is just the empty set, is an element of sigma, and then we're done with that. Okay, second one. Uh, arbitrary intersections. Well, um, if ai is an element of sigma, by 2, um, x minus ai is an element of sigma, and then by 3, uh, the union of x minus ai is an element of sigma, and then by 2 again, okay, so 3 right here says that if you have elements in sigma, then you can union them and they'll still be in sigma. Right here, we have elements in sigma, we get their complements, we union those complements, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the complements of that, because this is in sigma, so the complements of that is also going to be in sigma. But if you know de Borgen's law, what you can do is you can flip that sign around, bring that x inside, get x minus x minus a, and that just gives you ai, okay? So the intersection of ai is an element of sigma. And then from that, we're done. Okay, so now, theorem. This is going to be about generating sigma algebras, okay? Given gamma, a subset of the power set of x, uh, there exists a sigma algebra containing it. Proof. Uh, let sigma be the set of all um, uh, sequences of countable unions and complements of elements in sigma of elements in gamma okay uh see why is is sigma a sigma algebra uh, yes, it's pretty trivial, but I'll go through it. First condition, you can see over here, is x an element of the sigma algebra? Oh, sorry, I need it that gamma contains x, because it's not guaranteed otherwise. So, assumed. I'll say assumed. Number two... Um, um, if A an element of sigma, X minus A is an element of sigma. So, that's trivial, because, look at this, it's all sequences of complements. So that means, if A an element of sigma, by definition, X minus A is an element of sigma. That's because... You just do sequences of this. So if this is a sequence, I'm just adding to that sequence. So, you know, for example, A could be the union, if I take X to be the two element set, and gamma to be that, that set we looked at before, right? The set of, the set of A and the set of B, right? Let's look at all complements of this. Let's look at all the sequences of complements of this, okay? So I could do um, A union B. Okay, so sigma is going to be A union B, which give us AB, right? And that's going to be it, okay? Okay, so 
those are going to be all the complements you can get because x removing a is just going to be the set of b which is already in it. x removing b is already a. It's already in it. So you can only do arbitrary unions and that's only going to give you these three. And you can see x is in it. But that's not guaranteed because we could have just had the set of the set of a, right? Oh, yes, and then we could also have done a complement there, which would have given us the empty set. The empty set. Okay? If I would have done instead the set of the set of A, it would have given me the exact same thing. Okay? Because um, X removing the set of A is the set of B. Okay? And then I can union the set of A and the set of B. That'll give me that. I could complement that and gives us the empty set. Okay, so those generate the same one. Those generate the same one. Okay? And so, number three. Is it contained under arbitrary union? Of course, by definition. Um, if AI in sigma, by definition... A uh, union hey i is an element of sigma because we just do the sequences of unions and the sequences of complements, and that gives us it. Okay, so now very quickly, I'm going to introduce the Borel sigma algebra. Okay, so what we can do is we look at the set of all open sets. Now. What are open sets in R? Okay, we're going to look at R. Okay, so R. So open sets are going to be sets that don't contain their boundary intuitively. Okay, so an open set is a subset U of R such that now I want to make sure that this does not contain its boundary. And the most intuitive way to do this is just to have the open interval, right? Open interval. The set of x such that a less than x less than b is going to be the interval a, b, right? So you look at that interval. And we look at all of those intervals, and we say something is open. It's an arbitrary union of those. Okay, so so we say an open set is a subset U of R such that U is the union from I equals of alpha in J. Okay, because this could be uncountable. So that J could be the real numbers. Okay, so it's arbitrary. Okay, it might be past what you'd normally think of infinity. The countable infinity, where you list out the numbers, it could go past that. If you're not aware of that, you should uh, catch up on some real analysis. And it's going to be all arbitrary unions of A alpha to B alpha, those open intervals. Okay, so that you can write it as that. Cool. Now, after that, we define, define uh, the Borel sigma algebra on R. Um, it is the sigma algebra generated from the family of open sets. So the family of all open sets that we discussed before, so that means that it's an arbitrary union of open intervals. So we take that family of open sets and we generate a sigma algebra like we did in the theorem before, like we did in the theorem before, in the previous theorem. 
Okay, so we take all complements, we take arbitrary complements and unions. We take countable unions, we do sequences of unions and complements, and we generate the minimal sigma algebra, and this is called the Borel sigma algebra on R. And that is what we use for the Lebesgue measure, which I will go into next time.